this movie was insane. I am still processing exactly what the heck I just consumed because I... That movie was made for conversation and introspection, but I feel like it is made for group watches and not just like an individual watching being like, eh, and then living their life. That movie... That movie was crazy, okay? My name is Rusenica. Welcome to my casual YouTube channel. This is where I make casual content about anything that interests me. So casual in the respect of I see a movie, I like the movie, I talk about the movie on the channel. I do that the same with like books and things. I'm not a structured movie review channel. I'm not going to go in depth to what every single Easter egg in the movie means. I don't know who the director is, you know, I'm just a girl who likes to sit and talk about movies that strike her. Oh my, I needed to talk about the strays because it's meant for discussion. I immediately after I finished the strays, I was like, I have to text my friend Grace and tell her about this movie so that we can talk about it. I'm assuming that if you're on this movie, you're on this movie, you're on this YouTube video, it's because you watched the movie and you liked it so much that you just typed this into YouTube and here I am, you know what I mean? So assuming we've all seen the movie, I'm gonna get into how I felt about it. So, oh my god. Of course we see at the very beginning this woman named Cheryl who's a high achiever, um, going through life, doesn't like her life, and decides to just up and leave. And then we see her um, in the next couple scenes living her like luxurious life in a very I don't want to say affluent neighborhood, I don't even know if that is correct, but it sounds correct. An affluent neighborhood um, with her new life and her two mixed kids and her white husband. Shout out, sh I was going to say shout out to us and our white husbands, but that's not something to shout out, <laughs> especially in this context. Like This is very interesting for me to dissect, I think, especially because like, not only am I in an interracial relationship, I mirror the dynamic that is being portrayed, which is a black woman and a white man, um, except for obviously, you know, like the, their dynamics are far different. They live in England. I live in the USA. My husband um, and I are like very different than they are. Uh, we're very young, they're a little bit older and established, they have children, but I just feel like a lot of the themes that are in the movie hit, really struck a chord with me specifically because I'm seeing my dynamic kind of play out, you know? The, there's so many things that I noted about the differences in intercultural communication, just speaking for them as Brits as opposed to like me as an American in taking this, I thought it was so so fascinating especially because like i don't know a lot about um racial dynamics and like um what the social climate is like in england unless i'm you know watching megan and harry's documentaries um or like watching a youtube video that like discusses brit's experience you know i don't i don't know firsthand about what that looks like but from the very beginning hearing Cheryl talk about her struggles and how she just wants more as a black woman just like hearing that and sitting with that I just was like dang oh my god but then you like see her faking her new life and like a little bit of me was like look at she <laughs> look at her like living her life this is so great <laughs> before obviously you like know anything you're like oh my god this is crazy she like really leveled up that's wild um working at a school like living her life and then we start to see a little bit of her visions of the of specifically a black man haunting her and like at first we don't know who this is you know um but then she also makes like kind of passive aggressive comments about like certain things regarding race and like you see like the neighbors talking about certain things of, of like commenting on her daughter's hair being like that is so ethnic it's so ethnic <laughs> horrifying like because i have been in that situation before where i've like done my hair differently and somebody's like so urban you know what i mean oh my god disc oh my god like as much as 
you cringe at Cheryl's I'm gonna call her Cheryl even though her name is like Neve her name is fully Neve but that was her original name and that's like what I'm remembering now um but Neve sitting watching Neve sit through these discussions and watching people make like cringy comments and her not really doing anything about it um and her kind of like feeding into it and not really acknowledging her blackness to me um like even her daughter being like uh is uh, the the conversation at dinner with that i was like i just hired a black woman today <laughs> and then the daughter's like uh oh and then she, neve goes a black woman and then her daughter goes yeah because we're black <laughs> like, that was so delusionally funny to me because i was like i cannot imagine having to like hear from my daughter remember where blood can you imagine yikes it's a little bit unclear as to why specifically she's dodging why specifically she's dodging um the black elements of her life you kind of think that it has to do with the fact that she like left her family and her husband or her boyfriend whoever her partner who had a kid who had she who she had children with you kind of assume that the visions that are coming to her and the hallucinations are based off of her past life and her um the person her partner she was like with and like he, that he's tracked them down because that's what i was thinking was like oh my god it's the husband coming to get her because she's like moved up in her life and she was tortured beforehand now she's going to be tortured again and this whole thing is going to turn into a crazy story about how she's the victim which such like good um i don't know it was interesting how misleading w misleading the first couple figures were like the hallucinations so from like there i know i said this is gonna be kind of casual but i do need to like establish things before i establish <laughs> establish settings and facts before i establish my feelings on the facts you know so then we see carl we f we find out that it's carl who is following her and that carl's real and not just like her past partner and that carl and dion are brother and sister and specifically um her children which is heartbreaking oh my god there's so many heartbreaking themes about this movie and I was reading a bunch of Google reviews, like there's so many bad Google reviews, yet it's like number three on Netflix right now, which is why I also think it has a bunch of bad reviews because I think people go into it being like, ah, like a fun little thriller that's crazy, it's gonna be so fun. And then they get hit with like um, a very clear commentary on like racial dynamics. Racial dynamics, is that even a thing? Social dynamics as it relates to race and colorism you know like a lot of people don't want to sit with that in their everyday life a lot of people do not like to talk about that or see that portrayed in movies at all um i i love it i love it but i think that like the average person the person I, average people i feel like watch movies to like get away and to not deal with normal things that they don't want to discuss so this was kind of it's kind of like a slap in the face because it's just like let's talk about everything um Anyway, so we find out that Dion and Carl are her children. And since knowing that, I feel like the movie takes a turn because you just see all of this hurt that she's caused. And it's I think it's amazing that we specifically focus on the kids and like the trauma that happens within them because it doesn't give way for us to feel sorry for Neve. Neve is in yeah, it's Neve. <laughs> And um, I'm so happy that I didn't give in to feeling bad for Neve at all. Because, like, after you find out that Neve did abandon her kids, like, just fully just abandon her kids, you immediately think, like, what? You, I mean, you don't immediately think why because you've kind of been shown why. Like, she was very poor. She was achieving, getting nowhere. Um, I didn't catch that the, her sister was calling her about the kids, her kids. Um, but, like, you kind of don't, like, there is no room to wonder why she left her kids because you have been shown like all of the reasons why she would want to move out of her life so i'm happy that like 
the film a lot of people have problems with like the placement of the film is when i was watching it a bunch of other reviews um a lot of people have problems with like oh now that we know why she left it makes the film a little bit more confusing and weird and the like the tension's there but it could be more there if the first scene happened like in the fifth scene you know um but i i think it it really helps you come to terms with like the fact that this is a horrible person <laughs> and that you're not thinking of like oh why would she do that oh oh let's um look at this woman in her beautiful affluent life and then like try to figure out why she's so racist and why she's so uncomfortable with her background like we see it we see the reasons why she wants to flee from that one criticism that i've been seeing in some of the google reviews which i like should not even read like anybody can leave a google review but like i think that it's a valid point to bring up that some people were disturbed by the way that the black they're both black but the um original children <laughs> were portrayed in the movie um about how they're like violent and disturbed i think it was really important for them to be unhinged and for them not just to be like we want to meet our mom our mom doesn't actually want us and she actually wants to like silently kind of pay us off in a way um well that's fine we'll just go back to the place where we are and like live our life because we're better off without her i'm so happy that that wasn't shown because like it really in this scene where they were talking about um whether where they were at the like table and they were having a little birthday party you know like the chaotic violent birthday party that was to me just kind of felt like um we have never been mothered or parented and this is what happens when you leave children to not be mothered and parented like it's obviously people have to make the best of their lives no matter what circumstances they're from but in this specific instance like it's very clear their father was like out of his mind probably like abusive horrible person but then when you couple that with an abandoned mother and you leave that much trauma and abandonment um with an aunt that doesn't want you i don't like i can't like make any um claims about this situation like i've never felt that in the way that they're feeling it but it really just goes to show like, oh my god, you have traumatized two people that you thought you could just leave. But now you're dealing with the real life consequences of what it means to leave people. Obviously, it's horrible that her innocent children and innocent husband were brought into it. And then her husband consequently either is like heavily injured or just straight up dies from that. But... I just thought it was such it was so disturbing but so valuable can I even say that that's kind of problematic really valuable to see like when you just up and leave children and don't give them a chance to be the children that you made like that is what you have to deal with and it's so it just was so heartbreaking to see like these kids being like it's my birthday we're gonna celebrate and we're gonna terrorize the whole entire family because obviously the whole family didn't deserve that it was just the mom but like when you do leave a family and create generational trauma that each the trauma the trauma comes back to haunt you and it is <laughs> crazy so um something that i do want to like talk about a little bit within the dynamics of the interracial relationship is like okay um first off I want to establish although I am in an interracial relationship I feel like there are a certain there are certain type of people who get in certain types of people get into interracial relationship I feel like there are people like me who like intentionally wanted to be in a relationship with another black man like I specifically I went I had different phases like um I grew up adopted very whitewashed wanted to seek out a white partner then in high school fell in love with my first love and wanted to have a black partner because it felt more comfortable it felt easy you know like when you're with somebody who is of your same background racial background it just feels like there are things that you cannot it I can't even explain it I can't explain it and then um 
we didn't work out, <laughs> leaving me to be with a beautiful, lovely white man who's my husband. Love my husband. Um, but like that was just a coincidence. I'm I didn't seek out falling in love with somebody else, being in I didn't seek out an interracial relationship. I feel like there are people who seek out an interracial relationship that like specifically want to quote unquote move up, you know? aka this woman cheryl slash neve and then there are people who just stumble into an interracial relationship i feel like after having gone through like whatever they've gone through in their past of like preferences and um working through their dan through certain dynamics and how they feel about them you know anyway neve being somebody who actively sought out an interracial relationship and sought out the life that she lives she's living there's so many real life themes in that because like I said like there are people who do that and um the fact that she is so in control of her environment really just showed like even things that are out of her control like her hair itching that to me is very much a symbol of like yeah you can try your hardest to live that life that you want to live blend in with your neighbors not talk about things that are of your background that are of you but they will always be around and if you don't tend to them they will like come out of the cracks you know like that can be said about her hair and her children and just her past in general if you don't tend to the things if you don't care to things that are a part of you and you intentionally hide them discard them abandon them they're going to come up and if they don't come up they're going to transfer the trauma onto other people like even with her hair um it comes with the idea also comes with like her daughter's hair her daughter's hair her daughter had like been wanting to find probably a creative outlet with her hair for a long time um which is why she like dyed it that horrible blonde color it was a horrible color and then um the fact that she went to do the cornrows you know that was cool um and like the her son wanting to find like a friend i don't know if the son wanted to find a friend but her son not having any other black friends to look up to probably like gave him more of a desire to want to be friends with somebody else which is why he bonded to carl so closely um her not being able to like openly be express her blackness really easy and great into the way that her second pair her her second set of children feel and like i don't even know what to say about that but i just think it's very interesting um also it was very interesting a moment that was really interesting that was like two lines was when everything had been found out and carl or carl it was directly after the birthday party and the family was sitting it was neve her two children and the husband and the husband goes um sue you were just weren't, you just weren't going to tell us about your black children um and then neve goes see here at start and it's very interesting because like throughout the movie neve is not like comes off as not socially aware she specifically avoids any conversation that requires her to be socially aware of anything so her being like there you go like you just called them out for being black children not just like children obviously she didn't say you called them out for being black but like when she was like there you go like my black children like this is this is why i didn't want to like even bring that conversation but it was really really interesting that that in the one like part of the moment when she was like why we can't like do this because like i'm not gonna have this conversation with you you talking about my black children and you were you gonna raise my black children you weren't you weren't this is why and this is why i couldn't afford this house because like i didn't want to have my children so sad oh my god they're all insane <laughs> the thing all of this was insanity and was incredibly unhinged and just needed to have multiple conversations i i feel like i've just kind of scratched the surface of this discussion and i'm trying to watch a lot of other people's like explanations but that's what i felt about this movie and it like i said just i just scratched the surface i did not get into anything that crazy because i don't really have it <laughs> i don't have like the capacity to reach back in my mind and like pull out all of my thoughts because they're just simmering right right there but i will at some point 
probably make like maybe a part two if I feel it. <laughs> but that's those are my initial thoughts on the strays. And I really liked it. I thought it was so good because it causes conversation. And not a lot of people are open to that conversation right now.